Now here we're given another set of data. This is the height of a watermelon dropped from a tall building. We're given time in seconds and the height of the watermelon. Now again, let's try using a pattern or try finding a pattern in this data. My x values are 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. My height values or my y values are 300, 284, 236, 156, and 44. Now our first step is to always look at our x values and make sure they increase by a constant amount through addition. From 0 to 1, I'm going up 1. From 1 to 2, I'm going up 1. From 2 to 3, I'm adding 1. And from 3 to 4, I'm adding 1. So this is all consistent, which means now I can just look at my y values. Now the difference between 300 and 284 is either multiplying by 0 0.95 or we're subtracting or adding a negative 16. Now to go from 284 to 236 through multiplication we would be multiplying by a 0 0.83 but that's not the same as 0 0.95 if this had been an exponential model, then we would have been multiplying by the same number each time. So we know it's not an exponential model. So let's just keep checking our differences. From 284 to 236, that's a loss of 48. From 236 to 156, that's a loss of 80. And from 156 to 44, that's a loss of 112. Well, we figured out that it's not an exponential model. My first order differences here are not consistent. So it's not a linear model. So our last step then is to check for our second order differences. Between negative 16 and negative 48, that's a loss of 32. Between negative 48 and negative 80, that's a loss of 32. And between negative 80 and 112, that's a loss of 32. These here are my second order differences. And these are constant. That means this is a quadratic equation. Quadratic equation is in the form of y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. This is a second order equation and our second order differences are the ones that are constant. So we know that this data fits a quadratic model. Now we can solve for this quadratic model. We're going to use several points in our data and we're going to plug them into our standard equation y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c and then solve for a, b, and c. The first one I'm going to plug in is when time is equal to zero, or our x is equal to zero. And that means our y is going to be equal to 300. So if I plug this point in, we plug in 300 for y. That's equal to a times x, but x is zero, so this is zero squared, plus b times zero, because x is zero, and then plus c. Well, 0 squared is 0. Multiply that by a. That's still 0. b times 0 is 0. So that means that our c is equal to 300. Next, I'm going to plug in 1 and 284 into my quadratic equation. If I do that, we'll have 284 is equal to a times 1, because my x is 1, squared plus b times 1, and then I'm going to plug in this 300 for c, so plus 300. 
Now if I subtract 300 from both sides, I'm going to get a 1 squared times A, or just A, and then plus 1 times B, or just B. A plus B is going to be equal to 284 minus 300, or negative 16. Well, I'm very close. I'm going to need one more point. So next I'm going to plug in 2 and 236. If I do that, I have 236 is equal to A times 2 squared plus B times 2, which is going in for X, and then plus 300. I'm going to move my 300 over. And 2 squared is 4, so we have a 4A. And then 2 times B is just 2B. And that's going to be equal to 236 minus 300 is a negative 64. So I have two equations and two unknowns, which I'm going to have to solve for. First, I'm going to rearrange this first equation by subtracting B from both sides. Then I'll end up with A is equal to negative 16 minus B. And then I still have my second equation, 4a plus 2b is equal to negative 64. Then I'm going to plug this in for a, negative 16 minus b. If I do that, I'll have 4 times negative 16 minus b plus 2b is equal to negative 64. I'm going to distribute in this 4 into this parentheses. If I do that, I'll end up with negative 64 minus 4b plus 2b is equal to negative 64. Add 64 to both sides. And combine my like terms here, I'll end up with negative 2b is equal to 0, which means b is equal to 0. So I found another one of my constants. Next I'm going to plug b is equal to 0 into this equation and that'll get us a is equal to negative 16. So my quadratic equation then is y is equal to negative 16 x squared plus 300. Now you could have also solve this watermelon problem by graphing. All you do is plot time, which is our x values, on the x-axis, and the height of the watermelon, which is our y values, on the y-axis, and then just plot these points. We have 0, 300, which is right there, 1, 284, which is right about here, 2 and 236, 3 and 156, and 4 and 44. Now these kind of look like a straight line, but there's no real straight line that I can draw that would connect all of these points. So these points aren't exactly in a straight line. And there's no parabola here that is easily seen. If you try to connect these points with a smooth curve, the shape of the parabola is not obvious. But we know from the previous example that this is a quadratic model. So sometimes choosing a model by graphing is the best method, but sometimes it's not. So let's look at one more model. Here we're looking at the population of rabbits and we're going to choose this model by finding a pattern. We're given several years populations of rabbits. So the years is our x value and the population is our y. So to find a pattern, first we look at our x values. We're at the year 2001, 2002, 2003, and 2004. Between 2001 and 2, this is an increase of 1. From 2 to 3, 
that's an increase of 1. And from 3 to 4, that's an increase in 1. So now let's look at our y values. We have a 1,200, a 6,000, a 30,000, and a 150,000. Now to go from 1,200 to 6,000, we're either multiplying by 5 or we're adding 4,800. So we go and look at our next point. To go from 6,000 to 30,000, well, we're either multiplying by 5 or we're adding 24,000. Well, let's look at our last set of points. To go from 30,000 to 150,000, we're either multiplying by 5 or we're adding 120,000. Now, my first order differences are not the same, so this is not linear. But if you look, my multiplication is the same. Now, if you're multiplying by the same amount between each point, that makes this an exponential function. Now since I now know that this fits an exponential model, I can use that information to find this model. Now if we know that this fits into an exponential model, that means this is going to fit in the form of y is equal to a times b to the x. Now my x is going to be the year and my population is going to be the y. And you could plug in 2001, 2, 3, and 4 in for x and solve for a and b. But to make this a little bit simpler, since these are the only years that I have, I'm instead going to call this year 0, year 1, year 2, and year 3. If I do that, then the first point I'm going to plug in to solve for a and b is going to be 0 and 1200. So I plug in 1200 for y. That's going to be equal to a times b to the 0. Now b to the 0 is equal to 1. So what we really have here is 1 times a is equal to 1200. Or a is equal to 1200. Next I'm going to plug in 1 and 6,000. If I do that I'll have 6,000. That's equal to a which is 1200. I just solved for that. Times b to the first power because my x is 1. If I do that, well, b to the first power is just b, and if I want to solve for b, then I'm going to divide by 1200 on both sides. 6,000 divided by 1200 is 5, so I end up with b is equal to 5. So my model then is just y is equal to 1200 times 5 to the x. So now let's try solving this exponential model by graphing. We're going to put population, my y value, on the y-axis, and the year on the x-axis, and then we're just going to plot these points. In 2001 we had 1200, which is right about there. In 2002 we had 6000, which is right about there. In 2003 we had 30,000. And in 2004, we had 150,000, which is way off this graph. And if I connect these with a smooth curve, I can see that this mimics an exponential graph, especially since my 150,000 is so far high up off of our axis that my next point would have grown that much tells me that this is an exponential model. So looking at the graph, we can see that this is in the form of y is equal to a times b to the x. 
and we can plug in these points and solve for this model just like we had done before where we ended up with y is equal to 1200 times 5 to the x. So by either looking at the data or graphing the data, you can use those two tools to choose between a linear, quadratic, and exponential model. And that completes this tutorial.